Hey guys, welcome back to another video. My name is Josh and in today's video, I'll be providing you with a public portfolio update on my Sharesies account for the month of January 2021. And later on in this video, I'll also go over the Oceania Healthcare half year results because Oceania Healthcare is my largest position in the private as well as in my public portfolio. So we'll be going through the um, results and also tell you guys what I've done with my position as well. So be sure to stay tuned for that. And as always, this is not financial advice. This is not a recommendation for you to buy, hold or sell any of the stocks that I have in this portfolio. And you can read the full disclaimer in the video description down below. With no time wasted, let's get right into the video. So the portfolio is currently valued at $14,301.85, currently have $20 in cash. The returns are $2,756, which represents a percentage return of 23.71%. So over the past year, the account has grown from just under $3,000 and a $201 return to today, $14,300 and a 2.7K return. So the positions that I have hasn't really changed much um, compared to last month's update. I still hold the same stocks. I go see Property, Auckland International Airport, Heartland Group Holdings, Infratil, Main Freight, NZX, Oceania Healthcare. And for my ETF positions, I have the ASX200, the Australian Mid Cap Fund, Emerging Markets Fund, the top 50, which is my position that I never really add to anymore in this portfolio, as well as the US 500 fund. So now let's go into the Excel spreadsheet that I have to show you what the movements on my allocation on each of these stocks are. So here we are, this is updated as of January 30th. So closing was on Friday 29th of Jan. So Oceania still makes up the largest position in my public portfolio at 17%. And that's a percent increase of 0.8%. So in last month's update, the allocation was only 16.2%. Today it is 17%. So the increase in my allocation of Oceania Healthcare was due to the increase in share price. As of closing yesterday, it was trading at $1.58. Last month, it was only $1.45. I have been adding to this position as well and that's caused that 1% change. Heartland Bank had one of the largest movements in the portfolio, an increase of 1.1% to an allocation of 12.9%. Now, the reason being as well is because the share price has gone on a stellar run. So it's done really well in the past month. It's increased by 20 cents from $1.66 to $1.86 as of closing yesterday. ETF's position on a net basis in total have reduced by around negative 1%. So it's reduced by 1%, not a significant change in the grand scheme of things. And all the other positions didn't really change much. They all dropped roughly in aggregate 0.9%. So close to 1% drop. And the reason being is because these two, these two stocks, the two largest positions, in my portfolio had done really well. So total portfolio at market has increased by 1.7K since the last month, a really good result. And that is because a lot of people have been uh, subscribing to the channel. And so I have been topping up the portfolio based on the number of subs I get for every 100 subs. I add in $100 as well as people using my referral link with Sharesies. I get $5 each time someone signs up with Sharesies, you get $5 as well when you should sign up to Sharesies, so be sure to use that link if you're interested in signing up. So all the money gets put back into this portfolio. So not all the increase in the portfolio value is due to gains, but also because I have contributed to that portfolio. All right, so there we go. This is a quick update on where the portfolio is sitting at. So now let's go through the Oceania half year results. So here's some key highlights from the Oceania Healthcare half year results announced on the 22nd of Jan. As you can see here, there was a small increase in underlying EBITDA compared to the prior corresponding period. We also saw an increase of the reported net profit after tax 
an increase of $9.9 million to $24.8 million. Now, this increase was mainly related to the fair value adjustments to the investment property. And in terms of sales volume, this number was up 44% ahead of the prior corresponding period. So as you know, in my uh, Oceania video, I did mention that a lot of the sales that they were expected to settle in second half of 2020 was delayed because of the shutdowns and therefore those sales would be pushed into the first half of 2021, which is why we saw a huge increase in the sales volume. In terms of their operating cash flow, this number has increased 30.9% to 74.6 million as a result of those strong sales volumes. And this was actually the reason why this company was uh, free cash flow positive in this current period. Total assets has also increased to 1.7 billion, up 11.8%, so that is good. And Oceania also completed a heavily oversubscribed retail bond issue on October 2020, raising $120 million worth of debt at 2.3% per annum. So that's a really good interest rate. Can't really complain because this company will probably return a high rate of return of 2.3%. So anything that they can borrow at a low interest rate will be good for shareholders. In terms of the dividend, this interim dividend that they've announced this half of the year is 1.3 cents per share unimputed and this is actually down from last year's dividend of 2.3 cents per share so while this is a one cent decrease from the prior period this really isn't too much of a concern for me personally because this just shows that management is trying to save as much cash as they can to reinvest into the business or potentially even pay down debt now if we look at the statement of cash flow here just to highlight what i was mentioning about they were being free cash flow positive you can see that if you take the net cash inflow from operating activities of 74.6 million minus the net cash outflow from investing activities of 60.1 million then you get a free cash flow number of 14.5 million dollars now with that 14.5 million dollars most of it was actually used to pay off debt if you look at the net of proceeds plus repayments of borrowings over here that is a net of 15.4 million of a decrease in their borrowings and most of that was likely funded from the free cash flow number so this is a good sign for shareholders to show that Oceania is reducing their debt burden in terms of the HK side of the business we heard recently from management that they expect that the HK earnings to be past the point of inflection and in this slide here they do reiterate that stance basically saying that HK is past the point on inflection because we can see that the HK EBITDA has increased by 15.3% compared to the prior year period and that is currently sitting at 11 million of EBITDA in HY21 compared to 9.5 million in HY2020. In addition to that, the premium DMF and PAC revenue is 41% higher than half year 2020. And we can expect that premium DMF and PAC revenue continue to increase going forward as more of the Oceania portfolio shifts towards this premium aged care service. Furthermore, on this slide, we can also see that Oceania experienced strong resale and new sales volume since returning from New Zealand's level four lockdown, as I've mentioned before. Total aura sales are up 44% in the first half of 21. In addition, we can also see that new care suite sales have increased by 55% to 85 units in the first half of 2021. While there is an increase in the new sales units, it was a little bit disappointing to see that it didn't translate to higher development margins. As you can see here from the underlying earnings slide, realized development margin was actually 17 million lower than last year's number of 18.5 million. So that's a 1.7 million decrease even though they did sell more units this year. And as a result of that underlying net profit after tax for this half of the year is 1.4 million lower than last year, the number this year being $23.3 million. Now the reason for why realized development margin is lower is because management did say that higher development margin in previous years have reflected sales from premium Auckland sites, namely Meadowbank and the Sands, as previously guided as we sell down sites in more regional areas 
sales prices and development margins were moderate as observed in the first half of 2021. So this is the slide that you can see the development margins getting squeezed. It was 40% in the second half of 2019 while they were selling down premium Auckland sites. As you can see, the majority of the second half of 2019 was in Auckland. And in the first half, while we sold a lot more units, the development margin got squeezed down. And the reason being is they have sold a lot more units in the other regional areas other than Auckland. And as you can see here, for the average new sales prices across the portfolio, that is the apartments, the villas and care suites, all three of these different units have gone down in average new sales prices from the first half of 2020 to the first half of 2021. Personally, I was expecting a higher development margin out of Oceania. However, this actually does make more sense given that the majority of the units going forward will be sold in the regions rather than in Auckland. In terms of the future developments, they still have 128 units that they expect to complete in FY 2021. And they've already completed 89 units plus care suites in the first six months of FY20. So this is quite a good target because as you can see, the balance date for FY21 is actually the 31st of March because they changed their balance date, which means that they only actually have four months to deliver 128 units, whereas they only delivered 89 units in the first six months of this financial year. So this is quite a good target, and if management is able to deliver on that target, then we should expect to see uh, pretty good results in my opinion. Now looking at the valuation of the company, the company is currently trading at a dollar 58 cents per share which means that the company has a market cap of 985 million dollars in terms of the underlying net profit after tax that i expect from this business i do forecast that for the 12 month period it should be 55 million dollars so i've decreased my forecast from the oceania analysis video from 65 million dollars to 55 million dollars as a result of the lower uh, development margin going forward. Oceania's dividend policy is to pay out 50% of underlying net profit after tax, which means that on an underlying net profit after tax of $55 million, this should yield a 2.8% gross dividend yield at the current share price. And this also gives us a forward PE of roughly 18 times on this share at $1.58. In terms of the moves that I will make because of this result, there's no change to my positioning on the public portfolio. So I will continue to add into my Oceania position as I contribute into the account and dollar cost average over time. However, in my private portfolio, I have actually reduced my position in Oceania Healthcare. However, the reason why I reduced my position in Oceania Healthcare was due to my cash position being roughly five to 10% of my total portfolio. And as I've mentioned in my previous videos on this channel, I did say that I wanted to increase my cash allocation and the way to fund my cash position was to reduce my positions in stocks and one of the positions that I've reduced out of many other positions that I've also reduced was Oceania Healthcare because it is the largest stock that I have in my portfolio and because I have a much lower cost basis the proportion of Oceania in my portfolio actually increased to a level where I was a little bit uncomfortable so I decided to, to reduce some of that position and add into my cash balance. Oceania Healthcare is still the largest stock in my portfolio and I am happy to hold this one out for the long term because I can see that the aged care earnings is ramping up and going forward I do think that there will be a really strong quality of earnings going forward because of the aged care premium earnings coming out of the business. So let me know what you think about Oceania Healthcare's latest results I'd be always keen to hear your thoughts. Leave a comment in the comment section down below. If you enjoyed this video be sure to hit like and subscribe and until next time guys take care. Yeah.